Hi everyone, today I want to talk about one of my favorite problems in material science and mechanics uh, and it's one I think that really elucidates a lot of key concepts about um, linear elasticity and how to kind of use, uh, move beyond really your simple equation of uh, Hooke's law which relates stress and strain as thus where we have stress which we know is a second order second rate tensor as is strain uh, is related to strain via our Young's modulus here. Trying to move past kind of this simple uh, kind of Hookian uh, relationship and treat strain a little bit more complex using kind of again second rank tensor notation and really understanding uh, kind of all that goes into kind of linear elasticity. But one of the main problems uh, and actually one of the best problems I think that elucidates this concept uh, is the following example of uh, basically trying to press a stainless steel material into a die. So let me kind of sketch out the problem real quick and then we'll tackle how do we go about solving this. So here I am drawing my rigid die and when I say rigid I mean that when we press our stainless steel material into this die which just extends all the way out here it is not going to deform either elastically or plastically. So this is my rigid die. There. And then I'm going to put my stainless steel material just right in here. So it's just going to fit, push right up against that die, and it's just going to extend kind of all the way down here. So I'm just going to try to draw it in. And it extends all the way back there too, you know, it just fills the die. So that is our stainless steel, just call it steel, keep it simple. So. What is going to happen here is that we have this stainless steel die that has an initial thickness, Ti, of 6 millimeters. And we are going to exert uh, a force or stress straight down on our material. And I've already actually already forgotten. First thing you ever do when you uh, are <laughs> doing a mechanics problem, define your coordinate system. So coordinate system like this, it's a convenient way. Uh, defining a coordinate system... Uh, for certain mechanics problems, there are certain coordinate systems, and the way you define it can make the problem a lot easier, so it's always kind of smart. You want to align your coordinate system, uh, particularly where, uh, depending on the problem, you want to kind of align it where your stress is being applied. So here we have some stress that's being applied in the Z direction, so I'm kind of aligning my coordinate system uh, along that uh, direction. So uh, back to the problem. So initial thickness of 6 millimeters, we're going to press down on that uh, stainless steel material in our rigid die until we reach a final thickness, Tf, of 3 millimeters. We are also going to make a couple of assumptions. One assumption, so assumption, we're going to assume that, one, are the die sidewalls. And when I say sidewalls, I mean basically everything like kind of right here that's touching uh, our material. So die sidewalls, are frictionless. We are also going to assume that our material uh, behaves um, linearly elastic. So we're in even when we push, you know, in reality, if you deform a stainless steel material and you reduce it that much, you're going to be plastically deforming it. But for the sake of uh, simplicity in this problem, we're just going to assume we're linear elastic. We are isotropic. And we are cubic. And what this is going to allow us to do is work with our second rate tensors of stress, which we'll define right now since we're at it. We're basically by assuming that we're linear, elastic, isotropic, and cubic, we're going to be able to write out our tensor like this instead of uh, the other notation. Uh, the more general notation using a stiffness and compliance uh, matrices, which can uh, basically your Young's modulus uh, component could have up to 81 components. So that's very complex. Um, we don't want to kind of deal with that problem uh, just yet. We'll get to that in a little bit later, but for now, let's just work with a little bit of a simpler uh, problem. So by assuming linear elastic, isotropic, and cubic, we reduce just to this uh, notation here. So, and it also allows us to deal just with Young's modulus and with Poisson's ratio, which we've defined previously. So, Y and Z, and let's finish this up. Excellent. So, 
we've got our assumptions, we've got our initial problem statement, and what are we actually trying to solve for here? So I want to find, uh, basically, I need all components of stress and strain, and I want numerical answers. All right, pretty difficult problem. Uh, just by the look of it, you know, if we have basically nine by nine components here, we uh, stress our strain will look very similarly, except we're switching our sigma uh, with our epsilon. So we're asking for at first, at first from the outset, if we have all kind of these components, you're looking at uh, 18 essentially equations that we'll have to solve simultaneously. But you'll see that we could kind of reduce this problem a lot. So let's start. By looking at our stress matrix, uh, stress matrix and seeing uh, kind of what we have to work with here. So first, I want to point out um, with our assumptions made, what can we kind of say? Do we really have nine independent components in that stress matrix? No. You could see that again. We've kind of talked about this when we kind of did theory in class. When you're working with kind of this isotropic, you know, uh, and cubic materials, are actually really at all your stress matrix, your stress uh, tensor has to be symmetric. So you see that this component here is equivalent to the corresponding component here. Same thing here, here. They have to be equal. So another way you could write this is that sigma xy has to be equal to sigma yx. And the same is, uh, holds for your strain uh, tensor as well. So these, uh, basically your, your matrix or your tensor has to be symmetric. That is a kind of condition that's required for linear elasticity. So it reduces, basically allows us to reduce from nine to six components. All right, so that makes our life a little bit easier. So now let's look at the actual problem that we're dealing with uh, here. So we're pressing down on our material. So what stresses do we have here? So we definitely have a stress in Z. This is going to exist because we're pushing straight down on our material there. No question about it. Now, is there a stress in the yy direction? So is there kind of a stress pushing you know, up against here? I'd argue yes, because our rigid die is rigid. So when we push down, we know that physically the material wants to kind of expand and push out here. So we know that there's going to be a force exerted by the wall against that cross-sectional area. So this stress will exist as well. Is there a stress in the xx direction? No. Here, the material can just expand as much as it wants. There's no kind of restoring force. The die doesn't constrain it there. So we know here that this stress will be zero. Now, what about the off-diagonal components? What about the shear components? We can't really, you know, I mean, those should typically exist, right? They should all be, you know, non-zero. But we make this key assumption here, right, that the die sidewalls are all frictionless. Well, if they're frictionless, there's kind of no force that could, you know, exert on it. There's no frictional force. So all of the off-diagonal components here are zero as well. Zero, zero, zero. So we are able to reduce, let me just erase this now, our stress. Tensor. I use matrix a lot. I know there's uh, basically mathematicians or anybody who's taken linear algebra will kind of cringe at it. But and again, I'm just trying to kind of put it in, <laughs> put it in, uh, you know, kind of some language that, you know, if you haven't taken linear algebra, that you can kind of wrap your head around. So we can now write for this problem, our stress tensor is just going to be zero, 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 zero. And I'm just going to leave it sigma y, y. That exists. This is 0, 2, 0, 0, and then z, z. Well, I know we've defined this up here. You know, you could say this is a, a general stress. But these are all the non-zero components. So we just have a stress in y, y, and y, z, and z, z. So now let's write our strain components here. And we're not going to really worry at all about the kind of... Uh, the off-diagonal components again for kind of the same uh, same reason. So let's look at the normal components of strain. Actually, you know, we could just you know, you could just leave those off. 
So let's just look at the normal components for strain. So, will I, actually, let me say, and let me rewrite this problem statement. So all components uh, of this, and I'm just going to put it normal. So, is there a strain in xx x direction? So, coming out here, is there a strain here? Yes, because as we push down, we know the material by Poisson's, re, you know, by Poisson, related by Poisson's ratio is the one I want to expand there, right? So there is a strain in XX. We'll get back to this in a second. Is there a strain in YY? So coming out here. Well, no, there is not a strain in YY because our material is rigid. The mat uh, our material, the stainless steel, will push against this, but it will not uh, basically expand or, you know, Create any strain. So we have no strain in YY. Now what about ZZ? Yes, because we're actually we know exactly what it's changing. It's VA here. So there is a strain in ZZ. So I have the normal components that exist. I have all of my uh, stress matrix or stress uh, tensor right here. So now we could go about solving this problem. But first, I kind of want to ask a really uh, you know, kind of a key question, I think, that illustrates kind of a big concept in uh, kind of mechanics. You're used to working with Hooke's Law, which kind of relates to this, right? So if I have a stress, or if I have a strain in XX, which we kind of all agree that the material is going to expand here, why don't I have a stress in XX? This kind of seems to violate our Hooke's Law, right? I mean, I think everyone kind of agree on that. And that's kind of, again, why, you, you know, Hooke's Law is great, but Hooke's Law only applies for a very specific, uh, basically, stress matrix. Hooke's Law only will, oh, sorry about that. You only get this equation when you have a stress tensor. Let me remove our assumptions here real quick. This equation only comes out. when we have a uniaxial tensile or compression or compressive uh, loading state. So what I mean by that is, let's I erase all this good stuff, following. We only recover this equation when our stress tensor looks like this. Stress in xx and everything else is zero. In general, we should remember from uh, class and from our notes that if we have a stress tensor that looks like this, where we only have our normal components, we only have the diagonal components uh, along here, we have an, an equation that relates uh, strain to those stress components. So if you remember from class, we have like this is equal to minus sigma yy plus sigma zz, and the same holds for yy equals symmetric expressions. Just, you know, switch these xx plus zz, and finally, we can do the same thing. Z minus nu on sigma uh, y plus x. Perfect. So these are our equations. We have a stress matrix where all the off uh, diagonal components are zero, and we only have uh, non-zero components that are along the diagonal. So we only have normal. It's basically a normal uh, normal stress component. And actually, we see here we have a very special uh, case uh, where we have basically a case of plain stress. So all of the stress is uh, composed in the YZ plane. So we're looking at plain stress and also plain strain as well. So the XZ plane, we have plain uh, strain. So we have our expression here. We know from what we talked about previously that epsilon YY. This is zero. For stainless steel, we kind of typically know, or we can make an assumption that our Young's modulus is about 
200 GPA in class. We know that for metals as well, our Poisson's ratio should be about 0 0.3. Nice general rule for metals. We talked about in class that it could vary. So Poisson's ratio for polymers, 0 0.4. For ceramics, 0 0.2. Rubbers, 0 0.5. You know, it's a good, or 0 0.4 for rubbers. Uh, cork would be 0 0.5. But anyways, uh, those are some kind of good off the hand, you know, values to, to know and understand. So let's see what else. So we have, we've kind of reduced, you know, again, we're trying to find numerical values for this, 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 and this. So we need four equations, typically. But we already know the strain in ZZ, right? The strain in ZZ, we know from here. We've said that we want to reduce the thickness from uh, initially six millimeters to three millimeters. So we know that strain is the change in length here, the change in thickness over the original thickness. That's our engineering strain. So the change is from final to initial minus uh, three times ten to the minus three meters, because we want everything in SI over initially six times ten to the minus three. So we find that this is your strain as EZ is going to be negative. Perfect. So we know this. So we could check check this check mark off. So now we just have three equations: one, two, three, to find those three remaining variables, right? Well, we have one, two, three equations right here. Three equations, three unknowns. Plug, chug, and solve simultaneously. And that's all we have to do. So, again, I think the key thing you want to think about in this, uh, in this problem is that we can have strain without a corresponding stress in that same direction. It all depends on what is your stress matrix, what is your strain matrix, how do we relate these equations. Again, it's not just everything doesn't revol uh, reduce down to kind of this simple expression for Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law is great. And it's good that you know how to utilize uh, and you know read Hooke's Law from a stress-strain curve. But again, most loading conditions are more complex. So you want to go back and keep this kind of general description, uh, these general equations that you have when there are kind of these more than one uh, essentially you know loading state or loading condition. Uh, so again, don't fall you know no Hooke's Law. Don't fall in love with it. Keep it general. Then we could kind of reduce the problems into here. And there, that's a pretty complicated mechanical problem that we solved, you know, fairly quickly. So, again, keep it general. Uh, write out, you know, each time you approach a problem, define your coordinate system, write your assumptions, uh, write out this stress and strain uh, tensor, see what components exist, and then work from there. And then you should be fine, and you can tackle any problem that you, uh, you know, need to, and you know, either in class or in the future when you go and work in industry or academia or wherever. So that's it for today.